All right, welcome everybody to our second session of the day. Um, we're gonna have Srijit tell us uh, about CDN locks. Uh, take it away, Srijit. All right, thanks, Dave. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me and see my screen all right. Uh, all right, so my name is Srijit. Uh, I work with Comcast and I've been on the CDN team for a year and a half. And this is my talk uh, on CDN locks. So it's basically just an easy and simple way to ensure that when you're snapping or queuing your CDN or when you're making changes to the different components in your CDN, uh, nobody else can come in and basically dirty your changes and uh, snap or queue before you do. Uh, let's see, move. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so just a, just a little bit about myself. I'm basically from India. I moved to the US in 2011. So it's been a good 10 years here. And yes, yeah, so I've been with Comcast for the past five years and been with the CDN team for just over a year or maybe a year and a half. And yeah, so, so I like to code. I love playing outdoor sports, play a lot of cricket and soccer. And I, I love to hike and I love beer. So Denver is the perfect place for me in those aspects. But I also don't like the snow and the cold weather. So Denver is maybe not the best place for me in those aspects. Uh, all right, so CDN locks, uh, why do we need them, uh, what they are and how do, how do we use them? Uh, so this basically started off as a lab week project. So Comcast does this thing where we get one week, I think it's per quarter, where we can work on any project that we want. If it's something work related, fine. If it's something just for fun you want to do, that's fine too. So yeah, this started off as a lab week project for me. And it's in production as of ADC 6.0. So I'm glad to see that happen. And uh, yes, yeah, so when I joined the CDN team, what I realized was uh, like one of the uh, pain points that we had was uh, the whole process of uh, snapping a CDN or queuing the updates on the servers on a CDN uh, was very prone to human errors in the sense that only one person could do it at a time. And the way it was being communicated to the rest of the team wasn't very foolproof. So uh, like I ran into this problem myself where uh, like I didn't notice that somebody else uh, was snapping or queuing the updates on a CDN and I just went ahead and did it. So that ended up messing up the other person's changes and that's not a very good scenario to be in. So uh, basically uh, the why is uh, I would, I wanted to, uh, do this project because yeah so i wanted uh, this whole process to be a little less human error prone and also right now we do this uh, on our cdn team we do this uh, by posting a message on slack on a slack channel saying that yeah so i'm uh, grabbing the lock for this particular cdn and i'm going to be snapping and queuing and so basically stay away and uh, a lot of times uh, we miss those Slack messages, and that ends up being uh, just not very, like that just ends up screwing up the changes. And uh, then we have uh, the risk of screwing up production. So that's not a good place to be. And so, yeah, so the CDN logs is basically a way to ensure that your data is just your changes and nobody else can come in and make changes behind your back or nobody uh when you snap a cdn with your changes you can be sure that they are just your changes and not somebody else's um yeah so uh just guaranteeing data data integrity or data parity and just to make sure that a user has complete control on their cdn or their servers so uh, the CDN uh, logs is basically a simple API da database object that I created. It just has uh, four fields. It just specifies the username that wants to get a lock on the CDN, the CDN name, because we need to know which CDN the user needs the lock for, a message that is optional, uh, just saying that, yeah, I'm going to grab the lock 
uh, to snap the CDN or to queue the uh, queue the server updates on the CDN, and a type of lock. So I'll I'll dive more into that a little bit later. But it's just uh, like what kind of a lock you want, whether you want a soft or hot, hard lock. So we'll go into that later. Um, it is API accessible, so you have the general methods associated with it, just the credit methods. Uh, so you can create a lock, you can uh, get a lock, and then you can delete a lock. And uh, yeah, so one CDN can just have one lock at a particular time. So that is what ensures that we don't end up having like multiple users changing the CDN. There, there is a case where uh, you can have a lot of users changing the CDN, but then that's uh, up to the the creator the creator of the lock. So we'll dive into that a little bit later as well. Uh, this is an optional feature, meaning that the user may or may not choose to use this feature. So, so if they don't choose to use this feature, then the software will work just as it works today, where like you're just free to go in and snap uh, snap or queue your CDN. But then if you are using this feature, then you have to respect all the locks that the other users might have on your CDNs. And yes, yeah, so this will be introduced in ATC 6.0. Uh, which is very close to being released right now. Uh, yeah, so the how, uh, just uh, a user A just goes into a traffic portal and just grabs a lock on a particular CDN. It just gives you, <coughs> excuse me, it just gives you a list of options saying um, what's the CDN name that you want to have the lock on, what's the message, and like what kind of lock you want. And then if, if the getting the lock on a particular CDN, if that operation goes through successfully, then you're uh, sure that nobody else can come in and make changes or like dirty your CDN. Uh, and yeah, again, that depends on the type of the lock. Uh, and then once the user is done changing the CDN or snapping or queuing the CDN, they just release the lock and then it's open to anybody else to grab the lock. Uh, all right. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, this is basically the uh, layout of the CDN object. We've got the username. It's just a simple string, and it just uh, you don't need to actually specify it. You uh, they just uh, like if you're doing it through traffic portal, it just gets the username of the current user, and it just uses it. Uh, so 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 if you're user A, you can't really get a lock for user B on a particular CDN. Um, and then, yeah, so you specify the CDN name. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just says what CDN you want the lock on. It just specifies a message that's optional. And yeah, so the soft or hard lock, this is what I was talking about. Uh, and then the last updated time field. Uh, so the soft versus hard locks, this is just a shared versus a non-shared lock. So sometimes uh, we, like more than one person might want to work on a set of updates to a CDN. For example, if uh, let's consider a scenario where all the delivery services in a CDN have certs that have expired. So you need to renew all those certs and say there, there are a hundred TSS for that CDN. So you might want to uh, sync up with your teammates and just kind of divide the work, say like you take 20, I'll take 20 and we'll just take five of us and then we'll just do 20 each, right? So in that case, uh, you can make sure that you have a shared lock, which basically says that if you have a shared lock on a particular CDN, then a lot of people can make changes to the CDN, but then you will be the one who pulls the trigger on queuing or updating the servers, uh, queuing or snapping the CDN. So basically, it gives you one more level of safety, saying that you can, uh, when you before you uh, snap the CDN, so it'll show you what changes you're going to make. And then if you feel like uh, some changes are not what you wanted, you can ask them to back it out. Or... And yeah, so you hold the, uh, basically, you you hold the right to uh, snap or queue the CDN and nobody else can, but they can still make the changes to the CDN. So as it says here, uh, if uh, and then in traffic portal or like when you're creating a lock, if you don't specify the type of the lock, it just assumes that it's a soft lock or a shared lock and people can make changes to your CDN before you snap or queue it. Uh, this is a multi multiple user lock. So as I explained, um, like a lot of people can come in and work on the same 
task before you cure, uh, cure snap the CDN. And yeah, uh, so just stuff like DS updates, certificate updates, and so on. And as compared to this, the hard locks or the exclusive locks is basically when you have the hard lock on a CDN, only you can make changes to the CDN and only you can snap or queue the CDN. So like you cannot really sync up with your teammates or any other user to make changes to the CDN because nobody else has uh, that right. Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, this is just a simple get, uh, getting the CDN lock. So it's, as I, as I explained earlier, just specifies the username, the CDN name, uh, the message that the user put while uh, they were grabbing the lock for the CDN, and whether it's a shared or an exclusive lock, and then the last data time. So pretty straightforward stuff there. Uh, the post is just, uh, as I said, you don't need to specify the username in there. It just picks up the the username from the user that the request is coming from. You just specify the CDN, the message, and then whether it's a soft or hard lock. And then if you don't specify the soft lock, it just uh, defaults it to being a soft lock. And uh, so in this case, soft is false, so it's a hard lock. So, you, oops. Uh, and yeah, so you just get back uh, the message saying that the hard lock was acquired for that CDN and just the response has that CDN, uh, CDN locks object. Uh, yeah, deleting the CDN locks, you just need to specify the CDN name. And as I said earlier, you don't need to specify the username because of the same reason, it just picks up the user from your uh, request for, for the deletion of the locks. And um, yeah, so pretty straightforward stuff there again. Yeah, so deleting the locks on a CDN, it has got two different uh, ways that you can delete a lock on a CDN. So if you are the user, obviously you will be able to delete your own locks. So if I have a lock on a CDN and then I want to go in and remove the lock, I can obviously do that. Uh, I cannot get a lock or delete the lock for some other user unless I have an admin role. Uh, so anybody who has an ad admin role can go in and delete anybody else's locks because uh, I I had the scenario because uh, say that you have a lock on a CDN and you 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 forget to unlock the CDN and you just leave for the day or you just leave the leave the company right so you cannot have the CDN in a locked state forever. So an admin in that case can come in and delete the user lock and just say that, yeah, this CDN is open uh, for snapping and queuing now. Uh, all right, yeah, so locks validation, uh, a, a user can have zero or more locks. So as I said earlier, they can decide to uh, use this feature, they can decide not to not to use this feature. And also one user can have the locks on more than one CDN. So if I'm user A, I can go in and grab the lock on uh, CDN foo and CDN bar. So in that case, nobody else can make, make changes to, to both those CDNs. Uh, but per CDN, I can just have one lock, which kind of makes sense, right? Because you don't, you don't want somebody else to have the same lock as you on a, on a particular CDN. And same, uh, so 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 the first one is a one to many. Uh, uh, the second one is a one to one relationship, and then the third one says that a CDN can have a maximum of one lock, and that's also a one to one because you, again, for the same reason, you would not want the CDN to have more than one locks because that just beats the beats the purpose then. And then if a CDN is deleted, the lock associated with the CDN also gets deleted, which makes sense because you would not want to have a lock on a, on a non-existent CDN because might as well not have that lock then. Uh, all right. I think I'm way ahead of schedule here. <laughs> so let's do a quick demo here. Um, okay, so let me... So I'm gonna start uh, my local traffic ops and my local traffic portal. And then we're gonna uh, just walk through how the CDN locks works and how uh, like if one user has the lock on the CDN, anybody else cannot make the changes here. So let's see. Mm. Okay, can you guys see my Chrome? 
Chrome window? Yeah, but it's very small. Okay, here. Hold on. Give me one second here. Okay. There. One second. All right, is this better? Yep. All right, cool. So I'm going to log in as a non admin user first. So, all right. And uh, right now, so if I go to uh, the CDN right now, say the OTT CDN, and then if I decide to do a snapshot, since there's no locks right now, I can just go ahead and do this. So snapshot perform. Uh, so next, let's try to grab a lock on this. So you select this, uh, here, let me show that to you once again. So there's this lock icon there. So you just select that lock icon and you just uh, say which CDN you want to get the lock on. And then just uh, put in a message there saying snapping the CDN and you just select which type of lock you want. So, <clears throat> so let's do a soft lock first and you submit it. So traffic portal will display, <clears throat> excuse me. Traffic portal will display here that the OTT CDN is locked by this particular user, and then it gives it the message there. So now, if uh, being the same user, if I want to go into the CDN again and uh, say I, say I want to make some changes there. So let's see. Let's go to the delivery services that's associated with that CDN. Uh, let's just try to change the name of this. Uh, DS here, and then I click update, and it just goes through, no problems there. And also, if I want to go to the CDN, and then this, uh, the changing of the CDN, right? That spans a lot of uh, different areas, so uh, you can't change. So if you have a hard lock on a CDN, nobody else can change anything that's associated with the DS, a server, a certificate. Uh, fair iteration, anything like that. So anything that has a CDN relationship gets locked basically. So here I can change all the, uh, let's go to the delivery services once again. And then if you want to go to uh, manage servers, then if I want to go here and say, I should be able to change the server there because I have the soft lock on the system. And then if I go back to the CDN and if I want to queue, uh, uh, if I want to perform the snapshot as the same user, then I can do it. If I want to queue updates on the CDN as the same user, then I can do it. So all's well here. Now, if I want to go, uh, let me log out here and then log back in as the admin user. So now this user is not the same as my first user that I had there. So this displays that the OTT CDN is locked by some other user. But then if I still want to go and just remember that this is a soft lock here. So I can still make changes to the CDN, but I cannot uh, queue or snap the CDN. So let's test that out. Uh, uh, where's the CDN? Yeah. So CDN over the top and say I want to diff the CDN. Uh, or, or I want to snap the CDN. So I do this, um, and so it just gives me a message saying that user admin currently does not have the lock on the CDN OTT, so I can't uh, can't perform the snapshot. And then I go back here, and queue it, uh, I queue updates, and this should not go through, yep. And this is said that the user admin doesn't have the lock on the CDN OTT right now, so the same thing. But if I decide to go back to the CDNs and let's see, let's go to the delivery services. Uh, let's try to change this name back to what it was and update this, the DS and it goes through. And same thing with the servers. If you go to the managed servers, if you change it to what it was, this should go through. Because it uh, it's just a soft lock right now. Uh, okay, and since I'm the admin, I can uh, delete this lock of uh, some other user, right? So if I feel that this lock has been uh, well, well, if I feel that the user has forgotten to unlock the CDN, or if I've checked with the user, then I can just go in and click this button. And since I 
Hi, I'm the admin. I can uh, just go ahead with this, right? So this actually deletes the lock. But however, if I decide to say, if I go to the CDN over the top, or I don't even need to do that. I just can go here. And this is the admin user. So if I decide to lock it as the admin user and say it's just a soft lock for now, and then if I log out and log back in as the previous user, I should not be able to delete the admin's locks. Uh, let's see. So if I try to click on this, it doesn't work. Deleting CDN lock with the CDN name OTT. This is not uh, because the the user Shree doesn't have the admin privileges. They cannot go in and delete some other user's locks. Uh, so now same thing, Ad, admin has the logs as the user, uh, Shri, I cannot uh, really do a snapshot here. It should give me the same message here, yep. And uh, so this was uh, the soft logs or the shared logs, right? So I can still make changes to the CDN here. Let's uh, do this real quick. Uh, services. Yep, it goes through. And if I log out, admin, uh, if I decide to delete the lock, it goes through. And then let me do a hard lock on the uh, CDN now. Uh, I keep going to the snapshot page. So, so the CDN over the top, uh, snapping CDN, and let's do a hard lock this time. Cool. And as expected in the CDN, I can make changes because I'm the admin user right now, which has the hard lock. So if I decide to change this, uh, yep, that works. And then even if I want to do a snapshot of this one, uh, and then the right <laughs> let's uh, go to the OTT CDN, the snapshot, perform snapshot, goes through as expected. And now if I log out and log back in as the non-admin user here, uh, okay, CDN over the top. If I uh, try to make any changes to the delivery service, it shouldn't let me do it. Yep, it says that the user admin currently has a hard lock on the over the top CDN. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me go back to the slides here. Mm. Let's see. Okay, how am I doing on time? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much how the locks work in the CDN. So now we don't need to depend on a Slack channel to post to the entire group saying that, hey, I'm, I'm making changes, uh, stay away. So I can just grab the lock and then the uh, some other user who wants to snap or queue the CDN notices that I have the lock and just says, okay, fine, I, I, will, I won't uh, make my changes now. Or if it's a shared lock, they can still make the changes, but then just not snap or queue. Uh, so uh, future work for uh, for the CDN logs, uh, there is scope to add a time to live field where uh, we say that this lock will be valid only for say, I don't know, like two or three hours. And so it, even if the user forgets to uh, delete the lock after those two to three hours, uh, the, the system just go ahead and deletes it by itself. So that's a, a scope of future work. And then I'm happy to incorporate any other feedback that anybody else has on this or feels like will be a valuable feature for the CDN logs. As I said, this is uh, this just started off as a lab week project, just as something fun and something that I wanted to do for, for a long time. And then it made it into ADC. Uh, so it's still in its very early phases. And so if there's more features that um, you guys want me to add into it, I'll be happy to uh, do that in the future. Uh, all right, any questions? Let me, uh, where's the... I don't see any yet, Shujit. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm just trying to go back to the chat window here. I can't figure it, hold on. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, all right. If there's no other question, this is just uh, I. I would just like to thank the entire CDN team at Comcast. Like I received some really valuable feedback from them and I've been bugging them with a lot of uh, PR, PR reviews and blueprint reviews. And also I got a lot of good feedback from the whole ADC group in general. So thank, thank you all for that. And special mention to Jeremy uh, for all the traffic portal work that he did for this project. So thanks Jeremy. Uh, and yeah, if you guys want to read through the blueprint, it's available in our ADC repo here. Uh, and yeah, so I think that's about it. If nobody has any questions, I'll stop sharing. I, I was quick, wow. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. <laughs> All right, well, if anybody thinks of a question, um, you can always find us on the traffic dash control channel um, in the ASF Slack. Um, yeah, thanks, Rajit. Yep, thank you.